Hello. Hey. Richard, you alright? Right. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming. My name is Stefan, and today I would like to talk to you about. Um, well, I think it's the longest title, the present presentation title I've ever come up with, but um, I thought it would make a difference. Mountain Photo Geo Meta Land, and it's basically about how I built my site using images and extracting GPS coordinates and putting them on a map. That's in a nutshell what it's about. If you want to make comments or have questions, uh, feel free to go to the lower pad, that's an online. Does anybody know lower pad? Do you know what it is? Similar to Google Docs, uh, you can place comments and um, I can look at it afterwards. So feel free to go there. Can everybody see it? <coughs> okay. Um, just for me to get an idea of who you all are. Are you all <coughs> site builders? Are you new to Drupal, experienced Drupal people? Okay. Yeah. Everybody who's yeah. new. New. Everybody who's new. <laughs> Excellent. Intermediate? Any coders? Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Um, yeah, just to get this out of the way, I'm not. I build Drupal websites, but I'm not a coder. And that's why I. Uh, yeah. What's he doing on me? That's why he couldn't exist. He's everywhere, isn't he? He's everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, okay, shall we. Um, Let's get started. Well, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is all about uh, Drupal, building a website with Drupal. Before we start, let's just do a quick language lesson. I don't know if anybody knows, but I'm Dutch by origin, and Drupal, well, how do you pronounce Drupal? Because I've heard people say Drupal. Drupal. How do you say it? Drupal. Drupal. Right. Does everybody know where the word comes from? It's the Dutch for drop, isn't it? Flemish for drop. I'm loving that. It is. Okay. The Dutch, the actual Dutch word is drupal, which means drop. Drop. That's right. And if you kind of say that out loud, it's drupal, which makes Drupal. Simple. <laughs> um, Dries is also running Mollum. I don't know if anybody have heard, has heard about Mollum, Mollum, but Mollum is also derived from a Dutch word, which basically means kill him, which makes sense because it's an anti-spam system, which I thought was quite funny. Okay, um, yeah, who am I? I'm Stefan, I run a small company in the southwest of the UK called iCompute. I build a website using Drupal. Um, I'm a bit of an open source fan. I use Pyrrhic as well for web analytics, the open source equivalent to Google Analytics. Has anybody heard about Pyrrhic, used it? You should, it's great. Pyrrhic. P-I-C at the bottom. P-I-W-I-K. It's a very active open source community and Basically, all it means is that with Pyrrhic, you can set up your own web analytics server. Basically, you own your data then, whereas with Google, you don't. Um, and also at the top, I'm an own cloud solution provider, or partner, sorry, and that own cloud is an open source again solution for uh, building your own cloud storage system. Similar to Dropbox, but an open source. All right. Um, in my spare time, I run a local user group, local Drupal user group in Drupal Somerset, I've called it, and have a look at it. If any of, anybody of you wants to come and be a speaker, we have regular speakers, we have twice monthly meetings, or meetings twice a month, and speakers, and we do Google, use Google Hangouts to talk to them, and it's great. We call it and stream it. Ooh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, seems to have a mind of its own now. Um, yes, has anybody ever built a Drupal website here? I guess you have. 
The right stuff, right. So this doesn't seem new to you. This shouldn't be any, uh, shouldn't be any new to you that for Drupal you need a web server, uh, you need Drupal core, contract modules, and a theme. Those are the main building blocks to build a website. So. With Drupal, it's great because you can say, oh, I need my site live tomorrow, but I can't code. Can you help? So you can ask your friend, who is a coder, if he can build you a website. Well, you don't really need to because with Drupal, you can build it without coding and pretty fast, which I think is brilliant. Okay, just a little bit of... Um, just a few screenshots of my uh, site. I'll, I'll be talking about the, my personal site that I've set up using any, everything that you see here is available on Drupal.org. You can download it, install it, and play with it. I have found a theme. I've tweaked it slightly in terms of colors um, from a chap. His name is Dev, well, developer Saran. And his theme is a responsive theme as well. So that means that you download it, you enable it, you may change some colors if you like, and out of the box it's responsive, so it looks good on mobile uh, devices, which is uh, quite handy. And just to give you an example, the menu, I, the menu at the top, when you look at it on a mobile device, it automatically collapses, and then you have, well, this is a, a screenshot from iPhone, you can, just scroll through the menu that way. Does all make sense there, everybody? Excellent. Great. If you have any questions, by the way, just shout. All right. Right. Photos. Um, I take quite a lot of photos. I haven't published them all on my website, but my idea was to have these digital images and upload them to my website and extract the GPS coordinates from those images and place them on a map. Ideally, pretty much automatically, because I don't want to start finding markers and placing markers on the map because it just takes too long. So I had a look and found a couple of modules. One is Leaflet Map, which is the top one, which shows you a um, responsive map. So if you look at it on the mobile devices, it kind of scales nicely. Um, in this page here, this is a photos page, and there are several areas, so to speak. You have the leaflet map, which is the top bit. Then this area here is a slideshow, which is a views attachment. Is everybody familiar with that term? Yeah? Well, views attachment is, this is views attachment, and it's attached to the top bit. And whenever, think, whenever, whenever anything changes at the top, in the exposed taxonomy filter, which is, I can't reach it, but where it says show, you can select a category and then it will filter and the actual images will filter as well because they are linked. And it geolocates you. I recently changed a little bit to it. Can, you, can everybody see that orange dot for the marker? Yeah. If you, this is quite um, cool I think because that module that I found allows you to set it up, it's all out of the box, and it locates your device. So wherever you are, if you have a mobile, it works best on mobile devices. Uh, it finds where you are, places the mark, I mean, in this case, this is in London, a couple of photos of those last night. It shows you photos um, in your area. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah? Right. <clears throat> so, what can you see in this image? Yeah, it's, uh, it's my little dog having a good time running up the hill. Uh, but there's more to this. Because there's a lot of metadata in there and a lot of geographical information, latitude, longitude. And in terms of my site and in terms of making sure that those images are um, placed on a map, this here, the latitude and longitude, that's the information I'm after to get that out of the image when I upload it. So, if 
you use a Mac, I'm sure Windows has a similar thing, but if you open a, an image, you can see the information there. So you can see all sorts of things, the general info, exit information, plus the GPS you know, coordinates, and this is what I'm interested in. Um, you can also get that information from or through a little tool. And this is on a Mac. I'm not sure if it runs on Windows, actually. I think it does. A little tool called EXIF tool, and that allows you to extract or view, extract, and modify metadata in an image. Okay? So this is just going through what I'm doing here. I'm just info uh, querying this, little, this image there. And it gives you lots and lots of information, similar to what I showed you in the previous slide. But just selecting it there, the latitude and longitude, that's it. Well, it shows the altitude as well, but I'm not really interested in that. Um, latitude, longitude, and position combined. Okay? And as you can see, there's quite a lot of info in there. Has anybody ever done similar things to this? Queried in digital images or info? Huh? Okay. So as you can see, there's quite a lot there. Okay, you can see what um, camera or what camera was used to make it. And also the date and time, uh, the dimensions of it. You can even see that it was taken above sea level, which is great. You don't get that a lot in Holland, I don't think. Oh, never mind. Okay. Is everybody okay with this? Right. And now, how does that relate to a <coughs> Drupal website? Okay, with Drupal website, uh, with Drupal, you have content types. So everybody familiar? I've created a content type called photo. And the photo content type has lots and lots of fields. And you know the information I just showed about the exit information? With Drupal, there is an, a module called EXIF. And that does the same as what I just showed you in the previous little film. And that can extract. I have to set all these up manually, but that, all these individual items extract that particular um, metadata from an image and um, displays it. So that's quite handy. What is most important in all of this, because all this here, this text, that's all the text display. But the top is the geo field, and it says geo code from another field. And what that does, this is just, uh, these are two screenshots of the actual content type of the fields. So you have the photo at the top, and then you have the geo field. This is using the geo field module. And I want it, I've set it to GOK from another field. And this is important because what this means is that the photo at the top is the actual image that you upload. And then the geo field module looks at that image and then geo basically takes the information out what I'm interested in. And I'm interested in the GPS coordinates from it. And here you can see it. I've set it to geocode from another field and then use the image slash exit geocoder. Does that all make sense? Because this is basically the key to placing images on the map. Right. Since I take quite a few images, I haven't posted them all on the site, but I wanted to find a way to easily upload those images instead of just doing it one by one. <coughs> I can still do it one by one, but I've also enabled the bulk image upload module. And that allows you, I'll play it, allows you to basically drag and drop images from your local computer onto the actual upload field. Um, the way this works, you can type in the description and that applies to every image that you upload. It can be three images or 10 or 20 or 30 images, it doesn't matter. 
But I've configured this module, you can tag it with taxonomy terms. I've configured this module to create individual nodes per bulk upload so that every image gets its own marker on the map. <coughs> this uh, rings a bell, doesn't it? It's a bulk image upload from your old friend. Right. Okay, so now what it's doing is uploading all these images to my web server. It takes a little while. And then it generates, once that's done, it generates the nodes. So now I can't remember how many, yeah, four nodes, so it's created four nodes, there they are. But this is a normal Drupal display for content. If I go back to content, it shows me a list of the latest, well, of all the content, but the most recently uploaded images are there. And this is using views bulk operations, by the way, because that allows you to insert images and everything. It makes it easy to find things. And that's it. So the photos are uploaded. The four, the four images are now displayed on the front page. Plus, they can be found under the photos, and they are and they are geotagged as well. Let's see. Okay. So this is all about geocoding, um, this area, hang on a minute, no, we're not doing coding, do we? <laughs> right, so it's just about geo, <laughs> okay, so let's see what happens here. So this is, you know we've just uploaded those images and all we've done is upload, select, drag the images into the upload field, type some text, tag them, and that's it, basically press play. And then after that, they automatically got displayed on the front page, they are now mapped on the map, they are displayed here as well. <coughs> See, and this view shows the 10 latest images, but I only want to see images from Drupal Camp London, because those images I uploaded are from Drupal Camp London. So I select the, um, the drop down, the tag, or the taxonomy term there, and then it only shows me, it filters the images, and only shows me the images from Drupal Camp London, or the images who are, that are tagged with Drupal Camp London 2013. There's only four of them, and there's three, and that's it. And what you can do then is you can mouse around, obviously. You can click on them. It shows you a thumbnail, and those thumbnails are obviously clickable as well. And then they go to the actual piece of content. And this is again the um, the IP geolocation module that retrieves your location straight away. And as you can see, because I've filtered by Drupal Camp London, it now only shows the images from Drupal Camp London. So how is this made? If we go into the view, because this is all a view, so if we go into the view, the page you saw just now is called Leaflet Map, and it's using the Leaflet via IP geolocation module. You might, have a, you might want to have a look at that, because if, you, if you're interested in this, this is really cool. That's the attachment, so that shows you the actual images, and that is using JQFX module. And it only shows me the title, I only want it to show, to show the title in the photo, that's it. And it attaches it to the leaflet map. This is quite interesting. Inherent contextual filters. Because that makes it so that whenever you select a taxonomy term from the drop down, it um, applies it at the bottom bit as well there. Is everybody okay with this so far? Yeah. Um, quite a lot of what you've described, particularly around kind of meta tagging, you can also do with the File Entity API Medium module, which I've been working with a little bit recently, and I'm not sure how much I like it. So I'm interested. The Medium you, module? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interested that you did it a, a different way, and I wondered, yeah. I wondered if, you, if, if you made a sort of deliberate decision. No. 
<laughs> That's good, I like it though, I might think of that. But can you do all of this? I mean... Uh, you wouldn't be able to do the geotagging stuff that you're talking about, but in terms of setting up, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of um, uh, media content item that contains yeah. the metadata uh, yeah. and, and, and having a sort of friendlier way to upload images into, the, yeah. uh, uh, into your database, it does all those things. It's a little bit buggy, which is why I wondered <laughs> if you'd... Uh, I haven't used it though, okay. yeah, but thanks, thank you. Okay. So, some of the modules. <clears throat> if you are interested in anything location-based, have a look on the Drupal website. Um, project slash module slash location gives you an overview of all, well, pretty much all the location-based modules out there. Um, if you want to find out more about Leaflet, you can go to project slash Leaflet. And both media, upload has jumped a bit, but it's called underscore media and it's not load. And Drupad, which I haven't mentioned yet, uh, but we'll do now. I don't know if anybody has seen this before. What I wanted to do with my site as well is, because I take photographs, I like to, obviously I'm usually on the go when I take photographs, and I thought I was looking for a way to easily upload them. So I found Drupad. I know there are other tools out there now. But I haven't found any yet that are kind of that work out of the box. But this one does. <laughs> Paper, which is a bit of pain. It's two ninety nine. But that allows you to manage um, your site, not just your content, but also your site. Um, lots of screenshots here. But also you can log in. Uh, you, have, you can have multiple sites that you can manage. This is just this just takes you through what you see and what you can do. And this is just an example. So you can see your um, what you can do, comment, content, create content. I'm just going to go to create content here. And uh, that's an example of a blog entry. This screenshot, by the way, is on or within your Drupal site because the way this works, you have the Drupal module, the Drupal app on your phone, and you have the Drupal module on your site. And within there, you can say which um, content types you would like to exclude from the list there, which is quite handy if you have multiple content types. And the way you, this is an example of a blog entry, you create it and then you just go through the form, similar to what you do on your laptop or computer. Alright, get involved. If yeah, if obviously you are m into Drupal already, but I don't know how involved all of you are, but if you want to get more involved, I would suggest create a Drupal user ID, um, start building sites, and that's the way you learn. That's how I learned so many years ago. Uh, you can join a local user group or set one up and go to events, and you're here. That's great. Fantastic. Okay, that's, I think, it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. <coughs> no? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's uh, it seems, uh, really uh, nice, so thank you for sharing. That's all right, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try it out myself as well. I was wondering if you ran into any problems while figuring out the configuration and the modules, putting them together. Well, yeah, it's, um, you know what I showed you about linking the, getting the information out, because I started with finding on my computer just figuring out what kind of information is there, what kind of information is in the image. Mm -hmm. Then I looked at the Drupal module, I found the EXIF module, and that allowed me, it was a bit fiddly, it took a bit of time, because there were lots of um, pieces of metadata, and I wanted just to get the few bits out I wanted. So that took a while. And then... So you're just checking yes. that with configuration? Yes, have with a mouse. Hmm? With a mouse. With a mouse. Yeah. And have you... Um saved it in some form in code so that someone else can download it and not have to take all the time that you took to do it all? Uh, no. <laughs> Something like uh, features to extract all your configuration? 
I haven't used features in here, uh -huh. uh, but I do know it exists, and that could be. Yeah, I don't know if anybody would be interested in having, say, this package as a feature. I don't know. Yeah, that would mean. Yeah, features will allow, or will enable you, or enable you to kind of package your wall and you know, share it. Happy to do so, but I just haven't done it yet. That was it, I think. Just one more, just a comment on the um, geocode module. You can also yeah. use address data as well. So there's a module called yes. address. So if you don't have the geocoding information, if it's a different type yeah. of object, it's just a node that you want to geocode, you can, you can use the address module, yeah. which gives you all the correct fields for every country. So that's really useful. Yeah. That's um, right. And then you can link the geocoder uh, module to the address module, and you can use Google it will look up on Google yeah. and then it will get the geocode information from that and that works quite nicely. Yeah, that's good because I, um, I, did, I didn't need it for this because yeah. I just wanted the GPS coordinates. But I have used it in several other sites and it's really, really mm. good. It's really good. It works. Yeah. And that's great. <laughs> Sometimes it gets things a little bit wrong. But postcode. Yeah, the tr trouble is I don't know what you, I've not played with that much but I've found scenarios <laughs> where you put an address in and it actually comes back, comes at, you know, it's in a different country, so it gets it wrong. Yeah, I've had and, some um, come back in South America <laughs> or something. So then you have to kind of go in and edit it manually, but it's quite a good module. Yeah, it's very good. It's pretty stable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.